We looked at Fra Angelico, a devout Dominican monk, and now we're going to look at something or someone, well, completely different. Fra Filippo Lippi was also a friar, but he was unsuited for monastic life. He indulged in misdemeanors ranging from forgery and embezzlement to the abduction of a pretty nun by the name of Lucretia, who became his mistress and the mother of his son. Only the intervention of the Medici on his behalf at the papal court preserved Fra Filippo from severe punishment and total disgrace. He was an orphan who was dropped off with the church. He's not a friar by choice. And so you're going to see some of these behaviors. There are also stories of him working with the Medici and again sneaking off for dalliances with a variety of women. But he does take his art quite seriously. Uh, and he will spend his youth in a monastery adjacent to the church of Santa Maria del Carmen, which should be familiar. Uh, because when he was still in his teens, he must have met Masaccio there and observed him painting the murals in the Brancacci Chapel. So there's again a connection between Fra Filippo Lippi and a past artist. We've seen this before, and we're going to see it continuing and moving ahead. He develops a very linear style, and he will paint, or one of his most famous paintings will be the Madonna and Child with Angels. Here, we see a very unusual image. What you're going to see is the Virgin Mary with the Christ child being held up in front of her by two young angels. The Virgin seems to be sitting actually within the frame, and you see her shadow cast to the left on that very same frame, as if she's sitting half in and half out of a window creates a very interesting illusion in the image. The angels themselves seem to be partaking in this holy scene, one grinning out at the viewer, wanting to take part in this larger ritual of the painting. The one in the background, barely visible, seems concerned with the behavior of the Christ child. The Virgin Mary, with her nearly invisible halo, stands out for her youth and beauty. Now, of course, the Virgin Mary, historically speaking, would have been a very young person. But this is probably, or thought to be, actually a portrait of Lucretia, Fra Filippo Lippi's lover, in the position of the Virgin Mary. The hairstyle and the decoration is mimicking what you would see in the middle classes of Florence at the time. And you say, well, that's not historically accurate. That's not what she would have looked like. And you're exactly right. The reason he does this is relatability. You can't relate to something if they don't dress and act like you do. So by presenting this holy scene in a contemporary environment, suddenly it becomes more relatable. More people will look at it and maybe find great piousness, change their behavior, find spirituality. The background is also interesting. Now, most backgrounds that we've seen have been quite plain. This is quite complex, in fact, quite specific. You're looking at elements of the Arno River Valley. The Arno River, of course, runs through Florence. And you're seeing it in all of its detail in the background, complete with elements of atmospheric perspective and incredible detail that you might argue could take away from the piece. But you see, for example, here, things get lighter and the tone more subdued as we move into the background, creating this incredible sense of three-dimensional illusion. Here we compare the Madonna with images by Giotto and Duccio, and you'll notice that this is far more naturalistic. Gone is the gold background and the sacred conversation of saints and angels all at the beck and call of the Virgin and Child. The Virgin has taken on fully female characteristics, whereas Giotto's has breasts and a female form, but uh, still very spiritual and Duccio there's nothing female about the form except maybe the face. 
the child is also much more naturalistic. Uh, this child seems to be doing what we would expect a child to be doing, reaching out for its mother, not giving a sign of benediction. So he's created something far more realistic, far more relatable for your average Florentine viewer. This is what gives Fra Filippo Lippi's work such power, and his use of line is really going to draw us in, create incredible perspective, and create that incredible illusion that we're looking upon a holy scene, albeit one happening in a middle-class Florentine home.